know that by the things that Jesus said would come to pass. Amen. We are seeing those things right. happening before yes. our eyes like the song that they were just singing. Amen. Yes. Last week we talked about the importance of the Word of God. Amen. And we read a lot of Scripture out of Psalms the 119th chapter, the longest chapter in the Word of God. And yes. I, if you're out there listening and you didn't hear that, if you missed that, I don't do a lot of this, but I would like to encourage you to get that sermon. And we went back and listened to it this week and, and prepared it to air on the radio. I, I believe that the Lord helped us to bring out a lot of good points that will help you in your walk with the Amen. Lord to understand the importance of the Word of God. Amen. Yes, right. Hallelujah. And I'm sure there was there's a million preachers could do it better than me, but the Lord gave it to me and I gave it to you, and I believe it'll help you. Today we want to talk about go continue on a little bit along those same lines. I want to talk to you today for just a few minutes, going a little bit farther with the subject of the importance of the Word of God, but not just the importance of the Word of God for us as individuals, like we talked about last week, how that. Uh, we can turn to it for our strength. We can turn to it for peace. We can turn to it for comfort. Amen? Amen. In our time of pain, in our time of loss, when we've lost loved ones, and whenever we are uh, at times when maybe Christians find themselves to be depressed. Amen? Oh. I believe you'll find more comfort out of the Word of God than you will the pill bottle. Amen? Yeah. I'm still old-fashioned enough Amen. to believe that God's still got all the answers. Amen? Right. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, anyway, we're gonna, we, we, we talked about how that it was important and beneficial for us as individuals without that without a doubt but i want to talk this morning about how important it is for a society or for a nation as well amen oh. of course a nation or a society is built by built up of individuals amen oh, so what affects the people affects the nation what affects the society affects the nation amen right so i want to talk to you a few minutes about the way that the Word of God affects a nation. The Bible, in effect, teaches us that a nation that turns its back on God is a cursed nation. Whenever it tells us that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Amen? So that would lead us to believe and lead us to the revelation that the nation whose God is not the Lord is a cursed nation. Amen? Amen? And I do not believe, when you look around at our society today and you see the way that the morals of people have declined, the way that we find ourselves in almost a society that has no convictions at all, I believe that when you see the lack of word in our nation the way it is today, and you see the lack of morals and the lack of standards, and the lack of people that just still do the right thing, I believe that those two things happening at the same time are not a coincidence. I believe that the decline in our nation's morals and the ungodliness that we see in our nation today can be tied to the decline in the Word of God that is present in our nation today. Come on. I believe that the less word that we see, the more sin we will see. I believe, and I, I'll tell you why in a minute, because see, the darker things get, or the less light you have, the darker things become. And His Word is light. Amen? The less truth you have, the easier it is to be deceived. And I believe we can look into the Word of God and see the connection between the decline in the Word of God and the rise in immorality and ungodliness in our nation today. You see, without the Word of God, Brother David, there is no moral compass. Amen. There is no respect for life. There is no holiness without the Word of God. There is no convictions without the Word of God. George Washington, the founder of this country, the father of our nation, that's what they call him. Yeah. <clears throat> was right when he said it is impossible to govern a nation without God and the Bible. Amen? It is impossible. I believe the man spoke with the fire and the revelation of God 
in that statement. Right. I submit to you today the fact that the, 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 the fact that we see the lack of word in our churches, the lack of word in our government, and the fact that we see a rise of immorality are not two unassociated things. They go hand in hand. One has spawned the other. Come on. Brother Swagger told years and years ago about a, a newspaper writer whose last name was Grady. I don't even think Brother Swagger told his first name. But he was from the South, and I may have told about him before, but that's alright if you can remember. You're fixing to hear it again this morning. And he was a great writer, and he was respected among journalists. And He was from the South, maybe Atlanta, somewhere in Georgia maybe, but he made a trip to, the, to Washington, D.C. He walked what he called the hallowed halls of Congress, and he, he walked where the decisions were made in our nation and where the Senate gathered and where all of the, the, the things that affected our nation took place. And when he went back home and he picked up his tablet or however it is, his typewriter, I don't know if they had typewriters back then, but whenever he began to write the article about his trip to Washington, he said, this past week I have visited our nation's capital. I have walked the hallowed halls of Congress. I have seen where the decisions were made. Yeah. I have been to the White House. I have been to the monuments there in our nation's capital. And I am led to believe that this is why this nation is as great as it is today. I believe that America's greatness can be accredited to what takes place in Washington, D.C. I believe that what takes place in the hallowed halls of Congress and on the Senate floor, I believe that there we can, we can attribute the greatness of America. And he went on and he wrote a great article about that. A little while later, Brother Dave, he took vacation. He went back home to see Mom and Daddy. And he went back to the old home place where he was raised and of course, they were. They had a, a great family reunion and and enjoying fellowship. And after supper that night, they all gathered together there in the little humble living room. And Dad walked over and he picked up the old Bible off of the mantel and he sat down in the rocking chair and he opened the old pages of that worn out book Come on. and he began to read the word of God by the fireplace yeah. there in the living room with him and his mom and mom, dad and this newspaper this, this great accredited journalist uh, sitting there and he said he was so moved by the feeling that he felt and the spirit that he felt and he enjoyed it so much and it just brought back so many childhood memories of the times that he would sit on mama's lap and she would say the, the songs of the old hymnals yes Jesus loves me and amazing grace how sweet the sound and how that daddy would bow his, bow his head at the supper table and ask for grace and thank God for the blessings that he had bestowed upon them and how that every night they would gather around the old rocking chair and the Bible would be taken off of the old mantel shelf and daddy would read from the old pages of the word of God and he said he was so moved and he was so he, he felt so so stirred by this uh, he went back home to down south to Atlanta or wherever he was from and he began to write another article and he had first he had to write a retraction brother Sleese uh, he said I want to apologize to our readers uh, he said I want to apologize to you I beg your pardon I told you some time back uh, that the reason this nation is great uh, is because of the hallowed calls of Congress uh, I told you the reason that this nation is great uh, is because of the decisions that our Senate made on the Senate floor and the things that take place in our nation's capital. He said, please forgive me. My eyes are now open. I know now why America is the country she is today. It's because of mom and daddy taking down the old worn out Bible and sharing it around the fireplace and sharing it around the old rocking chair and sharing the Word of God with their, with their family. Amen. That is why America is so great. So when George Washington says, it is impossible to govern a nation without God and the Bible. Rest assured, my friend, when you kick God out of your government, when you remove the Bible from your government, when you remove God from your public school, when you remove the Bible from your public school, when you remove God from the public square, and you remove the Bible from the public square, you will see a rise in the damnable abominations that God God has condemned in His holy book and you will begin to reap the rotten fruit that you have sown. Do you think it's a coincidence that as the Word of God declines the number of people that have AIDS rises? Do you think it's a coincidence
countenance that the, the, as the word of God is tossed aside and cast out that we begin to see more and more abominations right down the streets of our city. Come on, brother. No, they go hand in hand, my friend. Yes, when you get rid of the light, darkness takes over. Exactly. When you get rid of the truth, lies and deception yeah. takes over. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. We've got leaders in our in Washington today that just soon lie to you to look at you. Amen? Oh. They don't care nothing about the truth. Oh. They don't know why because there's no conviction anymore. Oh. We've got people Come on, brother. that are no better than dogs jumping from one partner to the other. Right. Amen? Right, brother. A dog don't care where he does his business. Right. Amen? Come on. That's the kind of people we have in our nation today. Why, Amen. Brother Billy? Because of the lack of the Word of God. Amen. As we see the flame begin to begin to go out yeah. in, the, in, the, in the nation today. We see, all we see is a, is a dim flicker. Amen. Yeah. Oh. And, and, the, and the, the, the dimmer the light gets, yeah. the thicker the darkness becomes oh. to the place to where if you stay out of the light long enough, you begin to get used to the dark. Amen. Amen. Oh. I'll tell you another reason that the Word of God is not popular today because it is, as David said, a light. It is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path because see the word brings light amen and it's easier for you to live the way you want to live in the dark right and when the word of god begins to shed light on the things that we do amen. we begin to feel old time conviction amen right. and we don't want to feel that no more amen, amen. amen. our nation doesn't want to feel conviction Come anymore on. Come on. they want anytime anyone takes a stand for anything they just want to say don't judge me. Yeah. You're judging me. Yeah. I believe the most used and abused scripture in the Word of God today is judge not that you be not judged. And I'll tell you why. Because people pull it out like a six gun. Come on. If you dare take a stand against homosexuality, don't judge me. Yeah. Judge not. God's my judge. You're right. God is our judge. Yes, is. Amen. Amen. And we will stand, every one of us, before a just and a holy God one day. Absolutely. And He will judge us. Amen. Hallelujah. Exactly. He will judge us. Yes. So we see today the connection between the two. Because mm. where, there, where there is no word, yeah. there is no light. Come on. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. So the more we see the word done away with, mm -hmm. then the darker it becomes. Amen? Right. If we turned off these lights in here this morning, Come on. if you start out with one, yeah. well, that, it ain't too bad. Yeah. You can still see a little bit. you know. And if it was dark outside, we could do it better than this. Yeah. But you see that? Oh, that's a little bit darker. Why? Because a little, bit more, a little bit more of the lighting has been done away with. Right. Same way with the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Turn that one off back there, Brother David. Back here, by the door on this side. The more light. Now look here. Oh, man. Now it's even darker. Amen. But we can still, you know, if we stay in here long enough, our eyes will adjust some. At least those of you with good eyes be able to see better than I can anyway. Amen. Come on. So the more light you have. See, now, now we're going to turn it back on. Now I can see better. Yeah. Amen. Oh, now I see a little bit better. Yeah. Turn that back on, Brother Oh, now I really see good. Amen. That's the way it is with the Word of God. See, it's easier to kill babies in the dark. Right. Yeah. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Can I preach this morning yeah. against an abomination Go in the away. sight of God? Go he away. hates hands that shed innocent blood. You can stand on the mountaintop or on the top of the uh, uh, of Washington, D.C.'s, Go the away. highest Go monument, away. and shout at your right to choose. Honey, but i got news for you. Abortion is still murder in the sight of God. It doesn't matter who's for it. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many people write good articles about it or try to paint it up. It is murder. Murder. It is a it is a yeah. filth in the sight of God today. Yeah. It is an abomination that grieves the very heart of God. Amen. And why do we see such a rise in that? Because we see such a decline in the Word of God. Right. Amen. It's easier for people to do their sexual immorality right. in the darkness. Come on. Amen. True. Because there's no illumination. Right. They don't want the illumination. Right. They don't want the light. Come on. Because it's easier to sin in the dark. Come on, brother. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. Listen to what the Bible says. 
in John the third chapter. You see, the Word jerks the cover off of all the sin and ungodliness. Yes. And lays it bare. And we don't like it. We won't keep our stuff hid in our tent like Achan did. Yes. Amen. Come on. I preached a message one time in Greenville, Kentucky. Well, you got hid in your tent. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. That's where Achan was at. Right. He dug a hole in the middle of his tent and he buried it. Mm -hmm. God saw him. Right. Amen. Yep. And what revealed it? God's word. Right. When he spoke to Joshua and said, There's sin Come on, in the camp. Come on, preach. There's sin in the camp. Yes, sir. Listen to what the Bible says. And these are some beloved scriptures. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Let's read on. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. Now listen, this is what condemns you. That light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light. Why? He tells us. Because their deeds were evil. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. Kind of hard for you to argue with the word, ain't it? Amen. Up till now, you might not have agreed to what I said until I just now slapped you upside the head with the word. Amen. Until I just brought that out. Yes. What's it say? This is the condemnation. Yeah. This is what causes you to be condemned. Right. That light is coming to the world. Amen. And we know that Jesus Christ was the light of the world. Yeah. We know that the Word of God is light. Amen. Because David says that. Right. We know that Jesus said the Word. The Bible says the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Yes. So we see here that people rejected the light. Right. Why? Because they loved darkness rather than light. And why did they like darkness better? Because their deeds were evil. Because their deeds were evil. Right. You see, that which used to be a, shame, a shameful thing in our society today, people would keep hid because there was more light. But once the light begins to be put out, yeah. it's not so hard for you to drag those things out of the closet in the dark. Right. Amen? Amen? Because their deeds were evil, they rejected the light and chose darkness instead. Exactly. That's what it says. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Right. You see, if you don't have no words, you don't have no convictions. Come on. Amen? Come on, because the Word... Brother Sweets, as much as the Word will comfort you, it will give you peace, it will bring you strength, Mama. And I know you've known the Lord enough years to know that. It will encourage you, Brother Dave. It will also make you uncomfortable. It will also bring conviction in your life. Because the Word of God brings conviction. Someone said to me the other day, they said, well, I just don't have any conviction. I don't, I don't just have, I don't, I just don't have the same convictions as other people. Uh -huh. You know what concerns me? What concerns me is people that have no convictions at all. Right. Amen. Right. That's what concerns me. Amen. When you have people that cuss like a sailor, right. drink, smoke oh. dope, yeah. dress anyway, right. do anything. Amen. Shack up with somebody. Yeah. Do drugs, whatever the thing is. Lie, steal. Lie, steal, cheat. <laughs> and still go around. <laughs> don't judge me. I don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to judge you. Yeah. The Word will do that. Amen. Right. God right. will do that. Amen. If you have no conviction, something's wrong. Amen. Somewhere. That's true. I wanted to ask this person. I wanted to say, well, yeah, but what troubles me is do you have any convictions left? Come on. Are you reprobate? Do you have any convictions left? Do you feel bad about doing anything anymore? Yeah. Amen? Come on. Do you feel bad about doing... Can you lie and not feel bad about it?
about it? Can you cheat and not feel bad about it? Can you cuss and not feel bad about it? Can you drink and not feel bad about it? Can you smoke dope and not feel bad about it? Can you sniff dope and not feel bad about it? Can you lust? Can you can you can you can you commit adultery and fornication and not feel bad about it? If you can, oh, I find myself an altar and I find me one quick. Amen. I don't have to find it in church. Just grab a hold of a chair and get down there by it at the house or something, or just just kneel down in your heart right where you at and say, God, I've drifted so far from the light. I've got used to the darkness and there's no conviction left in my life. I have no direction any longer. There's no moral compass. Everything and anything is okay. Amen. That's where we have gotten this nation today. And listen. So what does the church do? about this problem. The great, mighty, powerful church in the United States. There was a man, and I forget which one, I don't know if it was one of the old time preachers or if it was a missionary from overseas. He wondered what made America such a great nation. And he came over here and he looked around and he visited in things. And he said when he went into the churches and he saw the fire in the pulpit, the Word of God coming forth, then he knew what made this a great nation? I wonder what he'd think today if he went into our churches across America. Amen. Come on. I wonder what he'd think today if he walked into some of the mega churches where they're doing the Harlem Shake, yeah. where they had the strobe lights and the smoke. Where the preacher is more like a movie star than he is the pastor. Amen. I wonder what kind of fire he would find there. Mm -hmm. So I asked you this question: What has the church done about it? Instead of offering something that will take care of the problem, the church tries to treat the symptoms. You're depressed? Oh, well, here, take my book. And begin to have positive thoughts. Take my book and begin to have positive thoughts. So see, and that's not going to the root of the problem. That's just trying to take care of the symptoms. We got more church people on dope than we do sinners, probably. Prescription drugs. All right. Why? Because they can't find no peace. And that's a shame. Amen. Because they can't find no peace. Let me tell you where to find peace. Amen. Jesus said, I'll give you peace. Not as the world gives you peace, but peace that passes all understanding. Amen. You can find peace if you want to find peace. Amen. So we see the church offering them a band-aid to cover up an open wound. Just trying to fix something up. Trying to fix something that is so broken that only the Word of God can fix it. Amen. Amen. Mom. Trying to treat the symptoms instead of going to the root of the problem. Yeah. Because where there is no word... There is no condition. Listen, if I was you, I wouldn't get on TV today and brag about how that Muslims, Buddhists, Satanists, fornicators, adulterers, homosexuals, well, they all sit in my pews every Sunday. Yeah. And they're happy as a lark. Right. Well, I wouldn't brag about that if I was you. Amen. That tells a little bit more about you than you probably want some people to know. That's right, brother. That means you ain't preaching no word. Come on. Amen. Come on. If you can sit in this church and commit fornication and not feel any conviction about it, Brother Billy needs to go back to the drawing board and figure out where, what I, I ain't preaching something right. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. True. Oh, how we got we got deacons and we got song leaders. Sleeping with one another, married people sleeping with somebody else's wife, amen? And they feel humpty dumpty about it, amen? Right. Sin should still cause us to feel bad. Right. If you cheat on your wife, you should feel conviction over that, amen? If you lie, if you cheat, if you steal, you should feel bad about that. Right. And these preachers will say, well, I don't want to make nobody feel bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If you're in that church, I'd get out and run far as away from it as I could. Amen. Amen. Because when we begin to bring light, yes. when, we, when we begin to bring forth the Word of God, the Word of God brings light with it. Yes, sir. The Word of God reveals the real us. Amen. That's why it has been rejected. Amen. James, the first chapter, tells us that it's a mirror. Amen. 
It says if you're a hearer of the Word only and not a doer, that we deceive our own self. Right. It says for any hearer, for if any be a hearer of the Word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. And he beholdeth himself, and he goeth his way, and straightway he forgetteth what manner of man he was. You see, the Word of God will show us where we're missing it. Yes, sir. <clears throat> the Word of God will show us where we... And I know we pick and choose. Right. People cherry pick. Well, I'm going to stay over here in the book of Proverbs mm -hmm. where it talks about how good God is and, yes. and how everything's good and great for me and how that you know my, I'm fine and it patting yeah. me on the back amen I, I, I try to stay away from some of that negative stuff yeah yeah you try to stay away from the negative stuff because it reveals the real us amen right. <laughs> amen it is sharper than any two-edged sword amen true it will reveal to us who and what we are today and the farther and farther we get away from it the harder it is to remember the truth. Right. The farther you get from the truth, the easier it is to believe a lie. Amen. The farther you are from the light, the more you can adapt to the darkness. Absolutely. It's easier to hide your sins in the dark. So it's it's not hard for us to imagine today why Washington, D.C. does not want to have anything to do with the Word of God. Come on. Because in there it says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Right. They don't like that. We see enough in the news to know that they don't like that. Amen. Amen. True. No wonder they take, they want to take it off all the walls. Right. No wonder they don't want it in the courthouse square. Yeah. They don't want it reminding them yeah. that, that, you, that you're not supposed to. Huh, don't commit adultery. My goodness, I, I can't look at that every day. That might make me feel bad. Yeah. Thou shalt not yeah. kill. That might make me think about abortion. Honor your father and mother with that. And thou shalt not steal. Yeah. They don't want to hear that. Really? Amen. Amen. I read a joke this past week. There was a man walking down the street and a mugger jumped out from the shadows. He said, give me all your money. Mm -hmm. And the man says, now wait a minute. You can't do this. I'm a senator from Washington, D.C. The, the mugger said, in that case, give me all my money. Amen. Yeah. We got thieves sitting in Washington today stealing money. Come on. They don't want to see that. That will bring conviction. God's Word is a schoolmaster. Paul taught that how would he have known right and wrong had he not had the law? Yeah. Right. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Jesus didn't come to a way that He came to fulfill it. Mm. Certainly we all can't live it. But to toss it out and just say, well, ain't none of us perfect. Mm. I know I'm sleeping with my best friend's wife, but Jesus, all of us have sin. Right. And you're just going to drag you straight to the pit of hell if you don't deal with it. Amen? Amen. So we stay away from the light. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons so many people's Bibles are covered in dust. Because the more you read it, the more light is shown into your life. Yeah. Amen. The more you read it, the more you see where your life does not line up with the way God wants us to live. Amen. Right. And I'm not talking about legalism, but sin is still dangerous. Amen. Amen. Sin is still dangerous. Right. Poison, even in small amounts, Come sooner on. or later does damage. Yeah. Amen. So it's easier to hide our sins in the dark, and I'm trying to close. No word, no light. No word, no morals. No word, no holiness. You see the condition of this nation? You see the lack of morals? Right. You see the ungodliness, the unholiness? You can rest assured this morning that it goes hand in hand. You can trace it back to the fact that we have less and less word all Amen. the time. Yes, Amen. Sir, we are raising a generation of reprobates. Amen. Because instead of teaching them what we are instructed to teach them out of the Word of God, right. they are being indoctrinated by doctrines of devils and secularism from and humanism yeah. from Hollywood and in our public school system. Right. Amen. True. In our colleges. Absolutely. Who is that woman? The Butter Queen. I don't know what her name is. The one they got all upset over because she did some racial remarks about 100 years ago. Paula Dean. Is that yeah, her name? Threw a fit. Yeah. Canceled her on TV. Yeah. A professor somewhere out in California or somewhere had all of his students write down the name of Jesus on a piece of paper and lay it in the floor and get up and stomp on it. Yeah. 
I don't know if they did anything to him. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure they didn't. Right. Amen? True. So you can get by with defaming Jesus, yeah. but don't you say nothing about somebody else. Amen? Right. That's the, that's the place we find ourselves today. Do you think it's a coincidence that when you read over there in Matthew 24, and Jesus told His disciples how things were going to be in the last days. Right. The love of many is going to wax cold. Amen. Fathers turning against their, their children and children turning against their parents. And right. Hatred. Sin abounding. True. Then you go over there and you read the writers who tell us how it's going to be in the last days. Perilous times shall come. Yeah. Men shall be lovers of, of pleasure more than lovers of God. Come on. And what's it say? They will turn from the truth true. to fables. Yeah. They will seek teachers because they've got itching ears right. and they want somebody to teach them what they want to hear. Right. So we see a departure from the Word of God Come on. and we see the signs of the end of time walking hand in hand Amen. in these last days. Amen. True. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Lord. Cursed is the nation whose God is not the Lord. For without Him, and listen to me this morning, without Him, you have no hope. True. And you can't have him without his word. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. That's like some people. Well, I don't believe in Jesus. I don't accept Jesus, but I just go straight to the Father. Yeah. Mm. I wonder what God's word says about that. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, unless he decides otherwise. No, wait a minute. That's not in this here. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You're condemned today because you reject Jesus. You're condemned today because you reject light. You're condemned today because you reject the truth of the Word of God. So we see how important it is for us as individuals. I don't know about you today, but this week I leaned on the Word of God. I trusted on it. Listen, it's not something I pick up on Sunday morning. It's a part of my life every day of my life. Amen? Come on. There shouldn't a day go by that you don't feed off of something Amen. out of God's Word. True. Amen? True. I had to lean on it this week. Yes, sir. There are times that I go in here and I find, oh, there's peace. I needed that, Lord. Yeah. Thank you for that. Somebody will email me or somebody will send me something and it would be, oh, man, I needed that. Mm -hmm. It's like a cool drink in a thirsty land. you know. Right. Then there's times when I walk over here and I open it up and I'll be like, oh, Oh, oh my, I see that, Lord. That hurts. Yeah. That hurts. Amen. That's what it'll do. That's why people don't want it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why they go looking for a version that's got some of that took out. Yeah. Right. We got a little funny thing we run on the radio station every now and then. It's called the Erasable Bible. Mm -hmm. it's supposed to be a joke. Yeah. Amen. Now, for you that don't want to live it, we have the Erasable Bible. If you don't like that part, just erase it and take it out. Right. If it makes you feel uncomfortable, just take it out of there. Yeah. If you don't like it, just say, well, that's just old and archaic. Uh, Amen. Come on. God's Word is from everlasting. Right. God's Word will always be. God's Word is our light. It is our guide. It is our moral compass. Right. And when a nation forsakes that, <laughs> sin does uh, abound. Right. Amen. Sin does abound. But the good news today, and I ain't going to get to the rest of this, but the good news today is where sin does abound, oh, grace doth much more abound. Amen? Amen? There is still hope today right. if we'll turn to the one who gives hope. Yes, sir. There is still peace today if we'll turn to the Prince of Peace. Right. God's looking for some Samuels today, and that's where I was going next. Might have to oh, preach that next week. God's looking for some Samuels today Amen. in this hour of darkness when it seems like a veil of darkness has come. Listen, if we could see in the Spirit the condition of this nation, it scares to death. If we could see what lies just beyond the horizon for this nation, it would scare us to death. If we could see the spiritual darkness as it moves in across this land, we would see Oh, God, I wish He'd give us that vision. Yeah. 
as we saw, if we could see as the word departs, as it is no longer needed, as it is set aside as something that is no, it's out of date. We don't need that anymore. Right. We can see that departing. And just as light leaves, mm -hmm. darkness begins to overshadow the land. Amen. That's what's happening today. True. That's what's happening today yeah. in our nation. Come on. Amen. Come on. That's why it's more important today than it has ever been before in the history of our nation. Yes. That men and women of God cling to the Word of God. That's why it's more important than ever that those of you that are in the pew get rooted and grounded in the Word of God. Yes. That's why it is, it's more important today than ever that men and women of God stand behind the pulpit and deliver what thus saith God. Whether it's popular, whether it makes you feel good, whether it makes you comfortable or not, say this is what God is saying in these last days. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, if they'll, if they'll pray, if they'll seek my face, if they'll turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Then I will heal their land. We've got to get back to the Word. Amen. Hallelujah. Preaching what thus saith God. Hallelujah. That is what God wants us to know today. His Word the importance of it. Not just for us as individuals, but our nation as well. That's why we should be concerned whenever they take the Ten Commandments off of walls. True. That's why we should be concerned whenever they no longer you're allowed to display them in the public square. Amen. That's why we should be concerned today at the public school system as the, in the way that it is. Right. Not being able to teach True. about God. Not being able to pray at least open prayers anyway. Can't nobody stop you from praying. Right. Amen. Right. When I went to school, I bowed my head and said, nobody ever stopped me. Amen. You can do the same thing today. Right. But the lack of word and the lack of morality and right. holiness today walk hand in hand yeah. together. Amen. Someone else this morning have something.